So good morning. It's the Stockbridge Bowl Stewardship Commission meeting. Welcome and thank you for coming. Um, so today um, we'll open the meeting announcements. So today we will, I just wanted to bring up one brief thing and I don't want to have a big discussion, but we have to be careful about the open meeting law. I know that and just that if we're having an outside meeting, to po we have to post it in 20 with 48 hours notice. So if there's any meeting that happens outside of our group, it has to be um, just to be careful. Um, we're all okay, but just a reminder for all of us, because I tend to be the one to respond to an email like, yay, or, um, but we have to be careful. Um, uh, let's see. I'm going to just change the order um, and we'll do the annual reorganization and I want to welcome, we have a secretary named Tammy Tupont, she works at Town Hall and so she will be present at our meetings but we have to elect her. Um, so can I have a motion to approve and elect our secretary? I move that we appoint Tammy Tupont as the Stockbridge <coughs> Stewardship Secretary. Second. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. So we have a secretary. Congratulations. Thank you. And the next position, um, we will have chair, vice chair, and did we have any other? We don't have treasurer, right? So chair. We have to elect our chairperson, or reappoint, or however we call it. I'm going to nominate you. Oh, okay. <laughs> to resume her position as chair. Second. I um. I I'd like to put this later on. Maybe John will come in. Oh, he's not coming. John won't be coming. John won't be coming. Oh, he won't be coming. Or is, uh, Jim W. Yeah, but he's not. He's not a voting member. So, yeah, but he's. Yeah. So I thought maybe he wanted a chance at it. Otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. First and a second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion moves. So um, now we have vice chair is John L. Do we want to reappoint him or do we want to elect someone else? I nominate John Landichi to continue as vice chair. Second. second. I'm Wait. sorry, I didn't hear that. For John to be the vice chair? I second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we do we have any other positions to fill in so far? No. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Um, Gary, would you like to do your boat ramp updates? Sure. Thank you. Okay. Well, we had a meeting with uh, Doug Cameron from Public Access, which is part of Fish and Game. On what day was it? That uh, was uh, Tuesday, a week ago Tuesday. And it was well attended. <coughs> he spoke about the trees, the undermining of the trees, and the bank erosion, um, the parking area, water diversion, um, quite a few things in there. And you may want to help me on this, but he said that we, the town, has to go get, we should get an engineer and send them, you know, have a study done and send the bill to public access. Well, there's a number of different ways to proceed. Mm -hmm. And basically the way we left it is put us on your list because yeah. it has this huge backlog. Yeah. Um, but it's the town that has to basically deal with DCR about this. And my understanding was Doug Cameron was going to be getting in touch with the town um, in terms of the procedures to follow. But there are various options. One is we can go out, we can hire our own engineer, do the work, but we have to first apply for reimbursement. Pre-approve it, yeah. It has to be pre-approved for reimbursement. Or um, the state can actually do that engineering for us. So as we left it, it was put us on your list. Do and then there will be a conversation, I'm sure, with Mike Canales, the yeah. town administrator. You want me to follow up with um, with Dave Cameron to make sure he gets uh, to town manager? Yeah, you can. I was planning on it too. Okay, I'm let's both do it then. Touching base with him and just saying, where are we? We'll show I them that we're anything. we're interested. I think that's important. Oh, absolutely. But do we want to proceed with 
continuing the town to lead this? Or we, I, I think if we have um, public access lead, it's going to be taking too long. Right. Well, the one thing that came up, um, <coughs> Mark Faber was there, the tree warden, and the yep. one thing that he thought that we could pursue immediately, um, and basically that goes through town hall, is that one enormous eroded horseshoe area mm. um, that that could be filled um, initially with like good quality topsoil layer number six stone and then gravel which then you know inhibits people from wanting to walk on there so that maybe rather than putting up signs and trying to say no you know banning you go in a, in a certain area that we just kind of make it unpleasant. Nobody wants to walk on gravel. Well, and perhaps we can alleviate that situation. And the other thing that he said, we might want to put ramps down to the water so that people aren't walking on the bank and causing additional erosion. That's a great idea. And the other thing um, he spoke about were uh, car, car top access points. Right. Because we have the bulk of the launches that we have there are car top boats, you know, kayaks, boards, and things like that. Um, and we could put a ramp or two in there. And I, I saw the other day in a, I don't know where it was, but I saw a, it's a very low dock. It looks like it floats and you could put your boat down, sit at it and kind of slide into the water. That's a great mm -hmm. idea. And uh, it looks like a, a yeah. very convenient way, a very safe way to do it too. Yeah, and there's the logical place, which is to the left of the actual boat ramp. Yeah which is kind of a, a good logical place to put yeah. something like that. And then he had mentioned, and I kind of was thinking about taking a, a drive someday. He mentioned they have some examples in Southwick and in Brookfield um, where yeah. they've done similar types of work. So it'd be interesting to go and see what's been done elsewhere and what it looks like and what the options are. Um, Richmond Pond too, they, I, I'm not sure if they have uh, you know, car top access there, but right. they did a nice job over there. Right. But the bottom line is the entire area has drainage issues. And so it really does need a good engineering design so that we can redirect the water mm -hmm. because it's, it's, it's a large impervious area. Well, for big it's, the quick storms, it's a lot of water gets- And we can bit. be, and you talked about it in a previous meeting, Mike, about, you know, if we're paving any area, you want to be directing that water mm -hmm. off to the side, so. Is this something that you think we can get done this year? the engineering portion? Possibly. Because that would really, that would speed things up. At least, you know, next year at this time, we can look back and say, we've got some of this done. It's August. Well, that's where to start. I mean, the first thing is, let's make sure that we can be reimbursed. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and, but I'll talk to Mike Canales about it. And we've had other things on our plate. We've been working on getting the weed harvesting going. So it's taken up some time this week. But we'll talk about it. Is it possible that the state parks and recreation already has a kind of uh, paradigm that we could we could just borrow, you know, for for uh, uh, that would be ecologically uh, researched and we know would be a good uh, pattern to prevent various kinds of things from happening, eutrophication, you know, um, uh, prompters for for these kinds of uh, access points, because it seems like this should be a statewide problem. And maybe they would have it. I don't mind trying to contact them and seeing if we could get something from them to, um, you know, that we could just sort of plug into. If they already had a an engineering design or they had uh, for, yeah. for for access, that might save us a lot of stuff. I, don't know. I think certainly for access. The problem though is with drainage, is that it's completely dependent on your topography. I mean, one of the other issues we have there is compaction of soil, severe compaction of soil which isn't good, which also needs to be addressed. So that part of that engineering, that's the entire parking lot. That's the entire area yeah. because yeah. everything is, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure there are a lot of varieties, but I'm just wondering if the committee in general would want me to do that. I'm, I, I, I think I think it were somebody to do it because I just think uh, the state probably already has done this homework. That's what I bet. And, and, and we could probably take advantage of it. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. But. I mean, yeah, you know, <clears throat> I can talk to Dave Cameron about this. He's, but he's very shorthanded. He only has a couple people working for him, and they have three hundred and fifty lakes. So, right. well, what Charlie is saying is, it's either a yes or no. Either they have it, yes. something like this, 
and to ask, you know, they may have 10 different A, B, C, and Ds of. I'll, I'll ask them what he ask. Does, but I think it's a good idea to ask. I think um, we ought to talk to Conservation Commission too, because they're going to have a, mm -hmm. input in this. Right, thanks. That, I think that's, you know, if they say no, like Michael said, then, we, then that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Very simple. And, yeah. and in terms of the trees, um, basically the tree warden is, you know, indicating the trees are healthy, they get plenty of water. And then most of the vast majority of their root systems are uphill. It's, it's not going down towards the lake, it's uphill. Okay. And yes, there's erosion and there's um, reason for concern. Um, and he just wants to, and, and we'll approve this for him to address doing a little bit of cutting where he's got cross limbs, where he's concerned about um, you know various aspects of the tree, but it was minimal. We gonna need any kind of approvals to have him do that from anyone? Just Can town hall. Okay, so. Yeah, I mean, that's basically his job. Yeah, so, so that, okay, so maybe that's something that can get done. This <laughs> stuff you oh, did say there were. Yeah. And anything else, Gary, anything? Do you want to speak about the buoys? Do you want to speak about? You no, know, lake level's down, which is good. Okay. Um, everything's going smoothly over there. We have no troubles. <laughs> and the zebra mussel stations running. Well, the state will come in in mid September with their special netting equipment and they'll they drag it in the water and it picks up microscopic the villagers the and if it you know and then they run DNA tests on anything because they're evidently there are there are special zebra mussels and there are non you know they're invasive and they're non invasive so they have to do DNA testing to confirm they're non invasive. So any what they any yeah. questions for Gary or the boat ramp? Sorry? Any questions for Gary or the boat ramp? No. Okay. Harvest. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. It, since we don't know who's out there, can they, if they have a question, if somebody in the public has a question, how does that work? It'll show on the box. Oh, it'll show on the box? Okay. Um, okay, harvesting, oh, harvesting of the bull update. Anyone want to kick yeah. that off, Roxanne? Yeah, um, basically we're getting ready to harvest. Um, Q Page at the select board meeting last night indicated, you know, when we took them out the last time they were used, uh, at the end of that season, uh, they were worked on everything, you know, new teeth, things were repaired. So they've already gone back out They've checked on them. They've hauled in the um, the battery for charging, and then today they're going to be hooking up the new GPS tracking unit hmm. that we just got in yesterday. Is that one that's going to be permanently installed, or can it be picked up and like used for putting buoys in it, things like that? No, this is going to be. It's a permanent install. Okay. And it's a fairly sophisticated unit. It actually has the, the lake map in it. Oh, good. It's, it's designed for aquatic applications. Oh. Um, it does install. Obviously, you could install, take it out, and install it in another unit. But um, what we're going to do is, I am getting probably today from Jackson Alberti. We'll get a file from him that has all the GPS coordinates from the existing final order of conditions. Shoot that over to me and I'll make sure things are lined yep. up better. Yeah, but we are we have the capability with this thing of setting a route. So you can program in your route, Michael, and um, you can program in something called a geofence. That is areas that you want to avoid so that those GPS coordinates can actually be programmed in and it says, nope, you don't go there. So it warns you prior to getting there. Oh, and there is great. a map, there is a display, so. Are we the only lake, pond, whatever, that has this machine? Are we the only one subjected to this outrageous, <laughs> that I don't know. outrageous foreign government's hold on us that has, doesn't even come here to see what is going on? I can tell you that the sheriff's department dive team uses this. You know, I know other states that have other lakes that have asked me, don't say anything. Are you like, driving the boat? Um, what? You, I am. I am. I have partner. to learn how to use it. Okay. I thought it was a self-driving. It sounds like it's almost a self-driving harvester. 
Oh yeah, but you know, it's going to be imperative. But I'm taking I'm taking, taking Roxanne on a trip yes. and it's Charlie if he wants to come. You're going to have to stay on on route, and we're going to have. Well, to of course it will. It was, right. There's right. not much even without it. It's just widening of of an area. It's really right. I think they've gone. We've gone, or the whole world's gone too far. Now, um, are we ready to put the harvester in the water once it's you know all fixed up? Because they need a flatbed trailer for that. Yeah, they have RWs moving in. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. The other thing is he, um, I, you, I don't know if you was, he wasn't involved because he just started a year and a half ago, I think, the highway department, he told me. Um, the conveyor belt, and um, uh, he knows he has to put that in, of course. Yeah. yeah, all right, I just want to make sure that since he hadn't done it before, that He also things. has the maintenance um, checklist. Okay. Oh, great for the harvesters. Right. And um, and I want to just, um, we talked at conservation how important just to follow the map. And I think with the GPS, it'll be so easily and uh, just to stay the course. And I think, Pat, did you want to open your mic and ask a question? Uh, yes, I did. Thank you, Jamie. Um, I, Roxanne, I had sent you last Sunday a map that has the proposed uh, revised test and control sites for the Floridone test. And the uh, revised sites still are the Beechwood area. Um, and then the other two are on the east side of the lake. So my request was to have us mark all of the areas and allow the harvester to go in the permitted areas that would be down the outlet. But until we resolve the other test areas to have it avoid the stuff that would be on the east side of the lake. Well, we have to um, be governed by the existing order of conditions that's in place until such time as any changes are approved. But I'm not asking you to go into an unapproved area. I'm just asking you to go into the approved areas. You would be cutting less than the actual order of conditions allows, and you would be allowing us to get our test sites approved on the east side of the lake while that's happening. Um, the DEP has requested that we coordinate or uh, meet with the Conservation Commission and the town before they will look at our proposed revisions. So what I'm suggesting is we can still get the harvester on the lake. We can still conform to all of the requirements of the, off, the uh, order of conditions. You're just going to avoid a couple of areas that are in um, question at the moment. Well, we'll have to discuss this with town council, but fundamentally what we have to adhere to is what's currently your order of conditions. Now, if we're not harvesting on that east side of the lake, we're having a very negative impact on a lot of homeowners yep, on the I east agree. side of the lake. Uh, when we are harvesting, we are not killing those plants we are trimming those plants. So the plants are still there. The stems are still there, whether we harvest it or not. Um, so we can have a discussion about this, but at this point, you know, we have, we have not been asked by DEP um, to consult on anything at this point regarding any movement of areas. And until that happens and they're approved, I'm assuming that we have to just conform to the current in place order of conditions. Yeah. But just be advised, you know, we're not killing these weeds. They're not being pulled out by the roots. We're clipping them off at the top. Mowing the grass. Yeah. We're mowing the grass. The stems are still there. So if ultimately you do a stem count, the stems are still there. Yeah, yeah. I understand that, Roxanne, but that's not what the requirement of the DEP is in terms of the superseding order of conditions. So I'm trying to adhere to what they are asking us to do in terms of the test site. And again, I just request, and I don't know how we move this ball down the field, that you can still do the west side and the outlet without violating any of the orders of condition. 
Um, well, I think we're going to have to follow up on that um, with town council and have a conversation with DEP because we have heard nothing from them. Right. So, um, all right, because the other thing that I really want to avoid is not having that harvester in the lake. Well, we're talking it's about going. putting it in this coming week. So okay. it's it, not a matter of not putting it in the lake. It's a matter of putting it in the lake and we will harvest according to the routes that have already been defined for us. Yeah. Let's see. Can I just Go ahead. Add a question? Pat, it's Gary. Yeah, Gary, I can hear you and see you. <laughs> okay. Um, then should I mark the area from um, um, Mackinac Shores to Mackinac Terrace, or should we just let that go for now? I mean, I can put them in anytime you need them. Uh, let me think that one through. I'm trying to think if there's a downside of putting them in right away anyway, if the harvester plans to ignore them. I mean, you just let me know when you need them and I can get them in the water if, if they're needed. Okay. Thank you, Thank Gary. You. I will do that. Right. Pat, thank you for coming with your question. Did you? Yeah, I have a question. Pat, are, I, I, I'm even confused. I know the original areas, and I was out with Roxanne and Richard and Solitude when we did the count. And I know that um, the idea was from Solitude to change the areas because certain areas had a higher count. But are you saying that we shouldn't harvester? potential areas that we deem are that we feel are going to be potentially the control areas or, i mean the testing areas at this time that we should avoid them even though we haven't gotten the okay to do it yeah that's my request michael because the dep in dealing with solitude has said they will not consider um our request to move the test sites until we have informed and dealt with the town and the DEP. Right. So I mean the DEP, I'm sorry, the Conservation Commission. So what I'm trying to do um, is Solomon-esque and say, yes, let's do what we can do while preserving the other side because in the DEP's superseding order of conditions, they ask you not to harvest in the test areas. Now, if we harvest, and yes, I understand it's mowing the grass. Yes, they can count the stems. You know, we may be all right, but I'm just trying to accommodate what the DEP has requested that we do. Right. But well, it sounds to me like what the DEP has requested that you do is meet with the Conservation Commission and the town to negotiate a movement of mm -hmm. these particular areas. So my suggestion is, is that you contact us and we arrange a meeting. Um, so this can be discussed as a group. Right. Yes, when, and I agree. When was the STEM count supposed to be, was supposed to happen when we did it? You didn't do a STEM count. We didn't do a STEM no, count, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. But I'm asking when, when should it have been done or is it still, is it too late this summer? No, to do no it's not, Michael, it's not too late. And in fact, Patrick <coughs> White had asked me for a copy of the revised map, which I sent him. Mm -hmm. And he was concerned about the STEM count. And I went back to the original super order, superseding order of conditions. And the DEP considers the growing season in Stockbridge Bowl from the beginning of June until September 30th. So we oh. have until September 30th to do yeah. that STEM count. I see. All right, thank you. I wasn't You're sure. You're welcome. I'd like to make a comment about this. Uh, as much as I respect Pat's point of view, it's it's uh, this the history of this undertaking, you know, to get this uh, uh, in place has been so difficult and so legally uh, complicated that it seems to me that we have to look at what, what Pat is saying as simple hearsay. That, the, that, that whatever kind of revision is being planned, the town deserves a formal notification before we take any action at all about this. This is a, a, it's nice to advise us about this, and I would consider this to be advice, but until the town gets formal, right. formal mm -hmm. notification about this uh, potential revision, and we've been able to get a, a town council and other uh, inputs to decide how we proceed with this 
I understand that Professor Kutz was going to be doing some analysis, uh, and I'm not sure if he's privy to this uh, revision idea or how that would affect things. There are many levels of, of formal. Uh, if we're going to take this seriously and do this in a professional way, we should consider what Pat has said as a simple advisement that the Stockbridge Bowl Association will be notifying the town formally of whatever their intentions are, and thereafter the town will take whatever actions necessary based on that formal notification. But unless we get formal notification, I would recommend that we don't do anything. Different. Yes. Yeah, I I'm agree. Planning to do. And I agree. Right. In the position based on Pat, I did right. receive your email. I did talk to Michael Canales, and that it was our position. We have nothing formal, and so we have to proceed under what we know to be the formal, final order of conditions and our approved harvesting plan. Mm -hmm. So, um, but what they're telling you is fundamentally that you need to have a meeting with both the town administration and the conservation commission to have this discussion mm -hmm. and to try to negotiate whether or not we're we're moving these. Um, well, first, yeah, um, and I am. I am trying to get on the Conservation Commission's next meeting with someone from Solitude so that they can actually talk about what they saw with the stem counts and the actual reason um, that, that the sites are being proposed to be moved where they are. And we can do the exact same thing with, with the select board. Um, I just need someone from Solitude to do that. So believe me, I was not planning on just dropping this on you in this meeting. Um, but I have sent, um, obviously Roxanne, I sent to you and now I've sent to Patrick cause he requested it. And yes, we can certainly formalize the whole process. I'm just telling you what feedback we've gotten from DEP and what they've requested from us to do before they contact you. So we will formalize it. And again, I will just request for the third time. I don't see the issue with avoiding the east side until this is resolved, but you will do what you will do. Well, I, I think you're going to have an issue with many um, property owners on that side of the lake if we they see us not harvesting there. Well, we already have the issues with Beechwood, and it's you know, it, it is not our rules and regulations about how we do the test sites. Um, and frankly, in the long run, we're already half through the summer. And then next summer, these sites would be the first place that would have the test applied and would be ahead of everybody else. So there's a little give and take on both sides. But that's our issue in terms of the SBA to deal with those homeowners. Thank okay, well, and there doesn't necessarily have to be two separate meetings. There can be a joint meeting with the Conservation Commission and the Select Board. So that can be arranged. We can have a joint Excellent. meeting. Excellent. And Pat, I'd suggest to contact Sally Underwood Miller. She's our, um, the Secretary of Conservation. She could help you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, Thanks, Jamie. Welcome. And then um, moving on, any other questions? I can't do something. Charlie, do you want to do your Board of Health? Well, I, I was hoping to have uh, something to, to update about the status of the lake from the point of view of cyanobacteria, but uh, the uh, GCA will be giving me that, I hope, for oh. the next meeting. So I'm going to postpone that. Otherwise, I don't have anything else to say now, except that from the Board of Health point of view, I we're having a new, we'll have a Board of Health meeting next week. And the Board is going to uh, I hope uh, approve an idea that we're going to commit the board to uh, public meetings in the future that are recorded and that have public access because uh, this is not only going to be safer for people in the future with respect to the disease, but it's also, I think, the proper way to let everybody in town have the maximum access to what's going on. And I would like to suggest that this committee do the same thing and set an example for the town that the town should see that everybody has access to the meetings, recording the meetings, and uh, being able to have whatever, you know, re-looking at them they can. So I'm going to make a motion from the Board of Health's point of view that we affirm that from now on we will always have recorded meetings and that they will always have public access. That's my motion. When you say public access, you're talking about remote access. You mean Zoom? Remote access, right. You know, just like right now, people are able to 
like uh, Pat Kennelly was able to weigh in. And uh, this is the kind of thing that I think everybody in town should have. We have a lot of people who don't live here all the time and they should have access. They pay taxes, they should have access too. And there are people without cars. I mean, you know, the, the weather. I mean, there are all sorts of reasons that people cannot physically come to meetings besides the disease. So I'd like to have this committee go forward and affirm that we're always going to, we're going to guarantee we'll do the best we can to always have public remote access for the public. You mean like streaming that they can? Like we're doing right now, okay. right now, right. And, and, and record it so somebody can look it, at so it people tomorrow. can look at it later okay. on. Right. And that would be through the town website or? Through uh, uh, the way we do it with the CTSB TV right now. Okay. Do we have a, a contract with them? Is that how it works? I mean, it just can't be. Do we have a, a certain amount that we can? Is there a, a cost to the town on this? Oh. No. But I was just wondering if they would just say, you can do as many as you want, like if every town. Well, at some decides, point, I mean, yeah. if Steve, Steve, are you here? <laughs> can you answer that question? Maybe he's um, not. CTSB is doing this as a volunteer effort right now. Right, but I'm just saying if every town and every town committee wanted to do what Charles proposed, is that something that your group can accommodate or how does that work? Just uh, no, we wouldn't. Most towns have um, uh, an IT person or someone employed by the town to do their meetings. Okay. Right, but that just, I guess the, the basic question is, is we're not using your Zoom account and we're using the town's Zoom account and we record those, would you continue to post them on ctsbtv.org? Yes, we would. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. So it's ctsbtv.org. So you can go out to 1303, I think is the government channel. <clears throat> Click on the government channel and you can actually do a search, plug in Stockbridge, it'll bring up all the Stockbridge recorded e meetings. So you can go back in quite a ways back in time. Okay. You can go years. So um, I just want to add to Charlie's comment and that basically last night in the select board meeting, we had a discussion about this. Um, and we decided that we would recommend, as opposed to dictate to every board and committee in the town, um, recommend um, continuing with hybrid meetings. And obviously there's all kinds of permutations because mm -hmm. how the meeting is conducted is still up to the chairperson of that committee. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, whether you have the public weighing in, when during the meeting you have the public weighing in, whether it's after every discussion topic or if all comments are reserved to the end, if you don't let anyone actually from the public discuss it with you, which is an option. There's no legal obligation to actually have this kind of input that we typically have in Stockbridge, but that's not a legal obligation. They just have to be able to see it and hear it. Mm -hmm. I have one more question. If it's a hybrid, if one of us, Roxanne, myself, any one of us is not here, can we still vote? If it's hybrid, if it's like an official meeting and it's hybrid, yes, we have can... For right yeah. now, uh -huh. Governor Baker has suspended so that you can participate as a member remotely uh -huh. until April 1st, 2022. So for right now was. that we have that dispensation, mass general law, normal mass general law says that um, if you're not going, to, if you're gonna be participating remote, you have to get permission in advance from the chair and you have to have a legitimate reason. This is under normal, typical circumstances. That's not what we have these days. So right now we're extended to be able to be remote until April 1st, 2022, and then we see where it goes Without, without the permission, just regular, right. yeah, just. Exactly. And we would do a roll call vote. Yeah. If someone was remote, we'd have to do roll call. Right. So I, I, right. Well, my my motion is speaking yeah. really to public access more than to the membership, you know, and, and that's a different issue. You know, membership mm -hmm. requirements uh, I, uh, basically are a, a different level of idea, and that wasn't what I was speaking to. What I'm interested in is, is that everybody in town should, since we work really for everybody in town, everybody in town should see what we're doing. No, I just changed the subject. Yeah, yeah no, no, I, but I just wanted to make sure that- We should that circle we, back. We understood. So my motion is, is that we should have public access from the public point of view with recording the meetings 
in whatever mechanism that we need to either through CTSB, ETB, or our own IT person or whatever, but just to guarantee that everybody in town can always look at the meetings, even if they can't be there at the time or see it at the time that it happens. Um, anyone second Charlie's motion? Well, what do we second? Can I clarify the motion? Sure. sure. Um, I move that um, the SBSC continue with hybrid meetings as they're being done now. Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 So the motion passed. Thank you, Charlie. Do you have anything else you want to add, Charlie? Anything else, Charlie? Anything else? No, I don't have anything now. Thank okay, you. great. And Michael Buffoni, do you have anything? Well, sewer and water, water oh, sewer sampling. and water um, sampling. We did. We went out um, July twenty second. No shortage of water. <laughs> uh, we measured actually eleven point five one inches of rain at the treatment plant last mm -hmm. month. Um, but we went out on, in uh, July twenty second and. Um, it was good to see that the, the, the thermocline was right at that 10 meter ish mark. Really? Um, yep, it was, we were really happy to see that. Uh, Chris Main went out with us from GZA. It was one of his um, times to come out in the contract was uh, I think first one in the spring and then in July. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, everything was very normal, um, which was nice to see. Wow. Yeah. Kind of surprising. Yeah. We yeah. We were we were expecting to see some pretty good mixing, but they're really it was it was all it was, you know, was there yeah. much turbidity at the thermocline. No, and actually uh, at the thermocline, there was a little bit, you know, there always is. And this and our Secchi disc reading, which is our, the, the naked eye visual test down through the water. I think we went down 22 feet. We could see it at. So I was we were really shocked to see the Secchi at that depth as well. Um, Lower nutrient. Yeah. So, yeah, it was good. I don't have any um, information on the test, the samples that we took. We took numerous, and, and obviously all the, the three brooks coming in were running very good. Um, they were very clear, which was good to see. Not a lot of erosion. I'm sure at the time of the storms, there was obviously there's a little more, but... Um, and the outlet, we took sam our, our samples in the outlet, which was raging. Um, so everything looked really, I mean, that it's probably the most extreme summer or month of July I've seen. I think the most I've ever measured in my 30 years here is July, uh, uh, July was like seven, a little over seven inches of rain. This obviously topped that. So, um, yeah, we were really happy to see. It's been cold too. Yeah. So that's going to be, yeah. Yeah. That's that's the water temperature is 72 yeah. right now, which is wow. Yeah. Is what does that mean, Gary? It's low for this time of year. It's it low? Sometimes it's up to 80. Oh, really? Is? Okay, well, that's... But is lower better? Will it keep it healthy? Yeah, lower yeah. is much better. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's what I thought. That's good. <laughs> you hope. Right. The thermocline below the thermocline is no oxygen. Below the thermocline, zero oxygen. You get a turbidity spike on that, yeah. that layer of dense water. And once you go through the thermocline, the, the, the oxygen is there's the old, zero. old dead water down there. It doesn't change really. Well, as yeah. as it stays, we, we like it to stay there. <laughs> That's good. And as far as water and sewer on John's behalf, uh, uh, Dr. Leodici, um, we have a meeting coming up uh, Tuesday and we'll be um, the, yeah. on the Can agenda the is um, the Lake Drive uh, sewer looking for the future to sewer lake drive so uh that's, that's all i really how about know. Maverick road it looked like it washed down quite a bit did that yeah. get into the reservoir at all no 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 um so that's all that's all i really have Good. thank you mike thank you mike yep any questions for mike okay so um gary if could we go to the buoys for test plot area you had mentioned about the red tape and before the meeting, but let's. Okay. Um, the, let me just look at my map here. Hold on a second. The, the three test areas that I had were the north end of the lake centered around Tanglewood Beach. I put two markers in there, one on each, on each end, and they have red tape on them and a red, a red cap on top. The markers from on the western side of the lake, which is from approximately Don Dino's old house to the northern end of the island, 
one, one end of that has a marker with red. The other end, I'm using the six mile an hour marker, which I tried to paint, but I told you I got <laughs> a little spray off on my hands. The beech wood, we're using one marker on the western end, which is about seven houses west of the grove. And we're using one that I put in in front of Town Beach, which has red all over it. Mm -hmm. um, we should try to minimize the number of markers out there. It's starting to get a little crowded. <laughs> um, and I know a lot of people don't like them, but they understand that they're, you know, we, they, they serve a purpose. So wherever we can, we're going to use the six mile an hour marker and have the top of it marked with red around the, around the cap to indicate an area where there should be no cutting. And if we need more, I have more ready to go. Thank you. Any questions for Gary? They are all, right now, all the markers are not uniform. No. Is there a ribbon or is there something we can- And out of tape yesterday. And red uh, tape. My red, red, tape. red paint can broke in my hand. I, no, no, but so. yeah. But for whatever, whoever is driving or whoever, whatever, but I understand the, we're gonna be- the Basically, yes, anyway. red cap will indicate a no cut area. Okay. But I think the best the best solution to, to make sure we don't cut in there is to program the GPS unit. Yeah. Right. That's going to be the. Right. Now, I'll be in charge of getting those markers out in the fall. And how, how late should I leave them in? Good when question. You, I'm not sure. When do you usually scoop them up? We usually take them up just before the Josh, you know, the oh. middle of September. Oh. Then I would stick with that. I mean, stick they with your routine. Yeah. Water's chilly. That's, that's the other complication in terms of moving any areas. It's we do have the Josh coming up. Yeah, it's the nineteenth. Right. Oh, September. September. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. So I had put um, if we wanted to discuss to include Parks and Rec on our commission because that's the town beach area. And if their input might be helpful, um, I just thought it was something we could talk about. It, you know, we don't have to decide today, but maybe to consider. A couple of meetings ago, I thought we were going to invite the head of the town, or the Parks and Rec, because I think it's such an important thing, the beach area, and hear what they're if they have plans or what what they wish right. to do. I think it would be a good 15 minute or 10 minute um, addition to the lake. It's such an in, in, inter, um, integral part of the lake for the community. That, it makes sense to have them part of the discussion. I apologize. Have it them makes come sense in as to have them part yeah. of the yes. discussion. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you know, we talked about that. so may I make a recommendation that we do invite, who, who is the? Um, uh, the Steve Nonoff. Okay. Yeah, I mean, very easy going, very nice, yeah. very nice. He, I, I'm sure he will accommodate us right. if you ask him to come in for a meeting to give us a overview of what. Right, okay. Any other topics we wanna to talk about today? Um, one last one is, um, I know we, this morning at 4.30, I see a email from Greg Wellenkamp to <laughs> the GZA and a response at 4:45 or something. I I'm just like I don't know if it's my my phone that puts these weird no telephone times in about asking for a quote for a direct deposit, as they may say, up to Bullard Woods for the um, hydro dredging for the silt. And so Greg asked them again. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because I asked them, we have not gotten no, no, response right. back. Well, the response the basically, town. you you have a copy. The response was, well, we've been on vacation. We're going to try to get it to you by today, I think, oh. because Greg said he wanted that information for the Stockbridge Bowl Association annual meeting because he has a report. So mm -hmm. they said they were going to get it. But I think, if I remember right, I have it by today, but. Who knows? That's just to let everybody know what's going on. That'll be interesting. Yeah. And Thank right. Thank you, Michael. Anything else? Um, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Congratulations. All in favor?
Aye. Aye. Our next meeting is Friday, August 20th um, at 8 a.m. at the town hall and Zoom. Thank you all. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, Tammy.